When Sonic Frontiers came out last year, I left it feeling ultimately positive, but like there were some things that really did need tweaking, and I guess it's kind of appropriate that now that we have the three major updates to this game, I kind of feel the same way about all of the DLC. On the one hand, it is actually really cool that we got a couple of free updates for this game that helped tweak some things, fix a couple of issues that a lot of people had from the original base game, and even brought in new elements to make a whole new ending for the title. And on the other hand, the one update that feels the least polished or like it really came out in the state it was intended to is the final one and arguably the biggest one that people are looking forward to. That last Final Horizon update is the one that I really want to talk about the most in this video, but I do think it's worth touching on the first two updates and at least some of the features that they helped introduce. Now, when I do talk about Final Horizon, I do want to discuss how I felt about the story elements, but I will warn you before I get into any spoiler territory. The first update we got was back in March. The major elements brought into this were the photo mode, the jukebox, and some new challenge modes. The photo mode is cool. Uh, this is something that I've really liked seeing as a trend in the games industry as of late. I really wish that more games, especially like action heavy ones, had good photo modes in them. So it was good to see that implemented here. I have messed around with it a bit myself and I do have some fun with it, but I, I, I don't know. I don't like the controls all that much. I still think like some of those comfortable controls for or like just messing with the camera and everything like that was probably Insomniac Spider-Man. That one just felt really intuitive, like it handled it super naturally. And I guess if I'm still kind of comparing it to the Spider-Man photo mode, I do wish that it had a feature from that, and this is gonna sound weird, but in there you could turn off the character model. So if you wanted a shot of just the scenery or something like that, you could get it. So, you know, if you're trying to get a really good shot of a boss, but you don't want the player character in the way, something like this would be kind of nice. Still, welcome included. I'm happy it's there. Now the jukebox, that's a lot of fun. It starts off with a couple of tracks just right off the gate that you can actually use to listen to while you're running around in the overworlds. This is nice because as pleasant as a lot of the overworld themes are in Sonic Frontiers, and I do enjoy the way that they kind of build on themselves and the tracks sort of evolve as you progress through the story, they are all pretty like laid back, or I guess they don't have a lot of energy to them, not in the same way a lot of classic Sonic tracks do, so it's really nice having this option here where you actually get to listen to music, like legacy tracks from across the series, all kinds of games from 2D to 3D and everything all in here, but it's also just a really nice little collectible to be able to go out there and grab anyway. And I was pretty happy with the selection too, there's a lot of really good stuff in here, there's plenty of songs that I kind of skip over that I don't really care about, but I will say like just being on that first island and having the Mystic Ruins theme playing in the background, something about that just feels right, you know? It's good. You know, just because of the size of these maps and how many collectibles there are to go run out and grab, especially if you're just going for like 100% or you really just want to go out and explore more, having a wider degree of music that you can listen to is really only a benefit. The interface is not hard to get a hold of either, uh, and you can go into the settings and you can change if you want just a single track to loop, if you're just really feeling that for a specific vibe, or if you want it to roll through the entire selection, uh, whichever you'd prefer. And it's not too hard to just skip to the next track if that's what you want to do too. Although it does take like an extra step if say you want to go back to a track prior, but it's really nothing to complain about it. It's really all pretty straightforward. Another thing I noticed too was like going through the obstacle courses out there on the islands and everything like that, having the more upbeat tracks from classic games, it, it got me thinking about how the stuff with the, like more of a pulse to it, that stuff that really makes you want to move. I think the catchy music from a lot of the older Sonic games really lends to the sense of fun. I think the uh, the fact that it kind of like gets your adrenaline pumping, like there's some tracks that just like make you want to uh, to show off a little bit more, that make you want to like get into the groove and stuff like that. It's, it's a good time and it's definitely something that I hope if we ever get kind of back into this format for the Sonic series again, I'm hoping that this sort of feature makes a return. Now, one of the meteor parts of this update was the new challenge modes, those being the Battle Rush and Cyberspace Challenge. These are accessible directly through the main menu. Once you load up a save file, you can go in and you can take on a gauntlet from an island, say if it's the cyberspace stages or if it's the combat. I really didn't spend a lot of time on the cyberspace challenges. I did the first one, so you know, the Kronos Island cyberspace levels. These were already my least favorite part of the main game. I don't like that they're just versions of stages from previous games, but now they just don't control as nice, and they control differently from level to level, and it just feels so weird and dissonant. I don't, 
I just do not like the cyberspace stages in Sonic Frontiers. Definitely the low point of the entire game for me. I don't get a whole lot of joy out of them. And there was another issue that I had with these that I'll have to bring up with another feature that was introduced later. I did, however, really enjoy the battle rush. That was a lot of fun. So what this is going to do is it's going to set you against basically every normal enemy type that belonged to a certain island and then take you to the boss of that island all in just one stretch and it's a ton of fun here everything just feels a lot snappier and it was actually a lot of fun just toying with the combat and figuring out which moves got me through each enemy faster getting s ranks across everything on this menu was really satisfying i i enjoyed the challenge quite a bit and uh it wasn't really that much that it was hard it was just if you're going for that that perfection it was uh you know just finding exactly what you needed to do and then like formulating your own plan for how to beat all of these characters as fast as possible and uh, I don't know, I find it really engaging. I ended up liking that quite a lot. Now, doing all of these cyberspace stages and combat challenges all together like this can take a lot out of you. And frankly, I don't have the same dexterity as Sonic, but I do have something that could give me enough energy to help bridge that gap. That's right, this channel is now partnered with G Fuel. Now listen, I drank my fair share of energy drinks when I was in college learning how to animate, only to make videos on YouTube about video games instead. But these days, I need something that isn't loaded with all that sugar, but does have plenty of vitamins to help de-stress me and help keep me focused, and has the right amount of caffeine to give me a boost without those crashes or jitters. G Fuel has me covered with a ton of great flavors, including ones inspired by games I love, from Tetris to Pac-Man, Crash Bandicoot, and this weird blue aeronation that keeps chasing me in my nightmares. But they've got more than just the canned drinks. You can also pick up their powdered formula and a high-quality shaker to take with you on the go. Just add it to some water, give it a good shake, and you're all set. Unironically, I really love this because I live in constant fear of bugs and junk getting in my drink if it has an open top, so it's nice to have something that I can just close and take with me. Plus, this is like stainless steel. Like, this is good quality stuff. So if you want to try G Fuel for yourself, you can use my code WayneIsBoss at checkout to get 20% off your order. You get great tasting energy drinks, and you help out my channel too. I don't see anybody here that's not a winner. Thank you so much to G Fuel for partnering with this channel. It really means a lot. With that said, back to the video. The second update was interesting because the main content that came from that honestly felt uh, underwhelming in comparison to like how I felt about the battle rush. I, I got a lot less out of it. One of the main things was just celebrating Sonic's birthday. And so there are these overlays that you can put over the island and everything. So like a bunch of obstacle objects and everything like that are just going to be in this like party theme. There's even this really weird and obnoxious ugly frame just like over the the front of the screen and i man this was too much it's it's so obnoxious I, like it's cute don't get me wrong i don't have anything wrong with it at being there but i personally do not care for it i think it just looks very noisy uh, i think the only element that i thought was really cute was these little targets that are hanging out in the air that you use your homing attack against to, to get to higher areas like now they have like little sonic and amy faces stuff like that like that's cool but the rest of this was just visual noise there's also new little coco challenges which is kind of fun you know uh, just new obstacle courses that get you up to new coco and everything like that a bunch of them are dressed up in different ways like they'll have new accessories and everything like that i was wondering if maybe it would unlock sonic's ability to also wear some of those items uh, but to my knowledge it, unless i'm missing something that's actually not possible it's you know they're just there and so when you're you're idling and you're just kind of hanging out they'll they'll pop up and you'll see them they'll have all their cute little junk and uh, yeah it's it's neat it's whatever these are fine. They're they're okay. The big standout for this update was probably the open zone challenges, and these were essentially like so: you activate these, and within a certain time frame, you need to run around the immediate area and collect these spheres that will boost your combo meter, and then you just have to earn points by doing tricks, beating enemies, which I think is kind of like the most effective way to to gain the points and everything like that. You know, reach a high enough rank you know by obtaining a certain number of points for each of those challenges and there's a decent number of them scattered across every island they are not bad uh they're not really that hard once you get the uh the idea down but i didn't really find them that fun they're just 
kind of there and they felt a little bit like busy work. But what they do introduce, if I think if you S rank every single one of them, I, I don't know if that's a requirement, but I did that anyway because it really wasn't that hard to do it, is you get the spin dash. Now this was a big deal and people were talking about this for a while. The spin dash does kind of break the physics of this game in half and it's actually kind of funny the way that it works. It just sends Sonic careening off in whatever direction and you like small incline is this stratosphere ramp that just has him zooming off into the distance and it, it really just kind of breaks down the barriers of the open zones. It's it's funny and it is enjoyable but I actually do think it was kind of a good idea to lock it off and that you have to earn it because, again, it breaks this game in half. It trivializes every like overworld obstacle because you can basically just go flying over pretty much anything and i think it even has like offensive properties like you can use it as an attack it is enjoyable my issue with it is uh kind of going back to cyberspace is that you can use it in cyberspace stages man if you're trying to get an s rank you can do that with the spin dash or with some other like boosting tricks and stuff like that but the game like penalizes you for doing that it, uh, very lightly mind you all that it does is, is that it gives you the the s rank but there's this little icon a little asterisk so you know you did win but you didn't win the right way so here's this little mark just kind of showing that like yeah this wasn't a real s rank try again if you want to scrub that out and again it's not that offensive it's not that huge of a deal but it does bug me personally and it just feels a little patronizing it's just like i don't know man i i get it it's just <sighs> It, it is a little aggravating, and it was another reason why I just kind of dropped the cyberspace challenges pretty early on. Of course, there were some other tweaks and everything like that introduced in these updates. Uh, some smaller things, I, I'm not sure if I got them all down, but a lot of the ones that really stood out to me was like there were more momentum and physics options in the menus, you know, things of that nature. The biggest one to me was them finally fixing how talking to like the elder Coco, trading in collectibles to upgrade your stats, you used to have to do just like one at a time, and it was so aggravatingly slow and they finally fix it so that you can just pull everything in at once and just, you know, maximize your stats to where they can go with what you have on hand. That should have already been there. I cannot, for the life of me, fathom why that wasn't already present, but I am at least grateful that it's fixed now. They did also introduce New Game Plus. Uh, so, you know, you can carry over uh, a lot of your stats and everything like that, even things like the spin dash and stuff into the main game. And I did do a run through of the, the full game with all of that, and it uh, certainly makes it faster, but it, you know, it does kind of make you realize that there's really not a whole lot of incentive to run around uh, and explore these open zones if you're not really just going out of your way to make Sonic stronger. And because my brain works the way it does, I was never satisfied until I, you know, reached all of the stats to max, and uh, that was the incentive for running around in the overworlds, not so much that I thought the open zones themselves were really that much fun, and this kind of helped hammer that in for me. That was all the pre-game, though. The big Final Horizon update was the one that, when they marketed it, definitely got most of us talking. That was the one that was the most heavily anticipated, because it was going to introduce new playable characters and and new story elements, including adding more to the final boss of the game. And that was really a big deal for me because as much as I did have a good time with my initial playthrough of Sonic Frontiers, a big thing for me was the ending. And I really did feel like the energy of the game went so high, but it petered off right towards the end. Let's get scratching. Something that really caught everyone's attention with the Final Horizon update was the promise of giving us new playable characters, and they are characters that we've played as before, those being Knuckles, Tails, and Amy. But this did also kind of feel like a big deal. We have played as them before, 
but it's been a while. And to think, like, getting to mess around with other characters in these games almost kind of feels like a staple of the franchise. Sonic 2 introduced playing as Tails, and that was kind of neat in and of itself, but he was pretty much just a reskin of Sonic. But Sonic 3 and Knuckles took it a step further. That's where you actually got to interact with these environments, these same levels that you get to mess around with in Sonic, but in completely new ways that were unique to these characters. They were able to traverse these areas in totally unique ways. There were even parts of levels you couldn't even see without the use of a specific character. I mean, running around in Angel Island as Knuckles gave you a certain route that you just couldn't get as the other characters, and it was really neat. And after that, a lot of succeeding Sonic games did try to give us the ability to run around with the other characters and evolve their own playstyles. These were really fun to play around with more often than not, but over time, people did get tired of playing as the other friends, or at least there was a certain level of outcry from people who wanted to spend less time playing as the Amigos and more time playing as Sonic. So I think that's why we kind of stopped seeing these options in Sonic games for a little while there. But here we were being given an opportunity to run around in a really big environment as these characters and maybe even potentially in ways that we haven't seen before. So how did it turn out? It's very okay. Things did at least get off to a good start. I really liked playing as Amy here. She has the most uh, fun movement to mess around with, especially for platforming, but I did kind of have some problems with her too, but uh, maybe I'll address that in just a minute. Tails was fine as well. He wasn't as mobile as Amy was, and he has no combat utility whatsoever, but then again, I feel like all of these guys might as well have had no attacks whatsoever, given how useless they are in the grand scheme of things. And that's especially painful for Knuckles. I don't like playing as Knuckles in this mode, and that makes me very sad. It's been said before, but a format like this, you know, where you're literally just in this giant environment, especially around ruins that have huge connections to Knuckles and the Echidna tribe, and you're seeking out a plethora of collectibles, this should be perfect for Knuckles, and he feels terrible in this game. His glide has this really weird, like, pause to it when you're first initiating it, it just feels so weird how long it takes for him to go from a jump into a glide and it feels kind of unnatural that and it is just really hard to control and I've tried tweaking with the uh, the physics options in the menu a little bit but I don't know something about turning during a glide just never felt right and he just feels like he's slipping around on butter the entire time that I'm just floating him around in these environments and man the wall climbing too I don't know what they did with knuckles here he has this really weird mix of feeling kind of heavy but also just incredibly slippery at the same time I really did not enjoy, like, running around as Knuckles in these environments, and I thought it was especially strange that I ended up having to rely on using the homing attack as Knuckles more than his actually defining features in certain areas. This was super disappointing to me. Not as disappointing as how useless he is in combat, because once you unlock them, his punches do next to nothing, they're super slow, and it just does not feel good to try to execute. And yeah, I guess just so their sections don't last, like, 10 minutes each, each of these characters has a skill tree, and it just feels like padding to me, if I'm being honest. Like, these characters all feel almost unplayable until you actually go running around collecting experience from these little Coco and stuff like that, so you can unlock stuff on their skill tree. Some things like the spin dash for Amy, I think, takes like one skill point upgrade thing. It's like, why wasn't this just there by default? Like, why do I have to go out of my way to, to activate this, it all just feels very arbitrary and it's very weird and it really does uh, kind of give me the sense that this whole skill tree system really was so that you're not just running from point A to point B as these characters and just having it done too quickly but the things that you're doing with them feel so repetitive anyway, because if you're not just running towards the main objective, pretty much all you're doing is just running around to upgrade their strength and speed and stats and such nonsense like that, or you're gaining experience points that you can use to progress the skill tree. And then once you do progress the skill tree, that does kind of bring in a lot of more fun elements. So Tails, for example, he can just activate the Cyclone and just start 
start flying around these environments uninhibited and it just kind of gives you the sense that a lot of this is just here to be here i i, I don't know uh it, it felt like it was hard to find things for these characters to do in an environment that was not built for them and then there's uh there's amy with that I, i'm not entirely sure what happened with her skill tree here but a lot of her moves all revolve around her fortune cards which i get i i mean back in the manual for sonic city i think it was we were introduced to the idea that she had tarot cards although i think they went to fortune cards just kind of like create a little bridge from uh from reality into fiction there but that did just used to feel like a fun little tidbit about her and it feels like recently in the sonic media between the comics and and everything like that it's just getting a larger emphasis and it feels a little strange it's like it, it, i don't find it personally like that much more interesting than her running around with a hammer i find that a little bit more fun for a game like this but you know it, it's a cute little like thing like in sonic origins when you start up sonic cd i like that you actually do get to see a cutscene of her using these things and stuff like that and even here in this dlc we do see a moment where she's using them in a practical way to try to figure out her next step forward and that you know that made sense to me what's weird is that now she's using them in her attacks and stuff and that's strange. I think her using it for like a uh, a twirl that gives her a little bit more air is fine and her using them as kind of like a glide mechanic is, you know, that that's more passable. But for her swiping attacks, that's really weird. Why is she not using the hammer? Does she just not have that anymore? Uh, nope, nope, she still has the hammer. It's there for like two different things, but why was it done this way? Like, did people not like the hammer? Was that a complaint that I just kind of missed out on? Like, was this in response to something? It just feels strange. I'm not upset about it. Uh, there are a lot of people who are like really, uh, really up in arms about this, and I think that it annoys them more than it annoys me, but I also understand why people don't like it so much. Amy was never missing a gimmick, and the Pico Pico hammer just kind of felt like a part of her, so it just, it does feel really weird. I, I guess that's really all I have to say on that. I guess one of the small things that I did kind of enjoy was that you can run around and you can find other characters in the environment while you're exploring and stuff like that. And there will be these little moments where each of these characters interact and you get a little bit of flavor text about certain elements of the game, like why you actually see a mirage of big in the fishing hole areas. You know, things like that, where they'll they'll be kind of discussing parts of the ancient culture of this alien civilization. It's neat, um, but again, it is all just kind of flavor text and some of it like trying to explain away the, <laughs> it, like trying to explain explain the pop in and why assets just sort of like appear out of nowhere which I swear has gotten worse in this update than it was in the base game it feels needless and I feel like it's almost more distracting that you try to come up with an excuse for why it is that way than it would be if you just kind of let well enough alone and uh, didn't bring my attention to it and Sonic's not just sitting on his hands this entire time he's got stuff to do as well but you know it's more just more of the same it's things that we were doing in the main game Game, which is kind of my issue with it is that a lot of it is just running up these towers and these are interesting obstacle courses they are more difficult than what's been there before but I don't think that they're impossible they are a little challenging and a couple of them do take several tries but you know once you get it down it, it's fine my main issue is it with uh, I think the second tower in particular where something that you need to be able to try again doesn't reappear uh, so that you can use your homing attack on it so you have to try to ascend this tower in a really unnatural way and it does not feel good uh, that I don't care for but it, it's like the more I think about it I did not really hate these there were momentary frustrations with getting up them you know if you're really having a difficult time you can switch it down to a lower difficulty where they make it a lot more automated and I mean people were always saying that they wanted these to feel a little more hands-on and add a bit more challenge so I guess this kind of makes sense. It's just it, where this part takes place in the story. If you're just straight shotting this game from beginning to end and then you arrive at this part, you have already in the 
previous area just done this. And so it just feels really redundant. And then of course, once you get to the top of these towers, you know, assuming you've gotten enough uh, little gubbins out in the overworld, these like little lookout cocoa that activate these towers. Once you get to the top, then you have these new challenges from these, the spirits of these ancient pilots that, uh, you know, piloted the Titans. They start challenging you in several different ways. And these are okay too. They're kind of like if you were just doing one snippet of the battle rush, each of them has certain stipulations, mostly being like time limits. Your stats are fixed, so you're not like uber powerful and everything like that. But each of them also has like one trick to them where once you figure it out, it's just cake. And then you realize that it's really just not all that engaging because you just have to repeat this one thing over and over again. It's like figuring out the challenge from the second tower with these guys once you figure out the trick to beating them it just feels like more of a chore that you have to do it four times because you know you've already done it you've already figured it out there's nothing left to do here but to repeat it a couple of times until the game says you're done and I, I don't know these challenges just feel a little dumb I guess they're not the worst but they do kind of feel useless. And then there's the final challenge. This is the one everyone talks about. Uh, this is the one that everyone seems to have the most issues with. This is, I think, where the largest amount of problems come from this DLC. And it's all because one mechanic while cool on the surface and something that I was legitimately hoping for does not work that well. This final challenge is a boss rush. And you know what? I like me a good boss rush. I actually do like all of these Titan fights quite a bit. So it's really exciting being able to just do them back to back. I do think that this may have been better served as its own challenge akin to the battle rush. But, uh, you know, a lot of games do have their boss rushes at the ends of the adventure. So it doesn't feel entirely out of place here, but it does again bring in the stipulations that your stats are fixed so you know you can't be too powerful and just wipe them out too quickly and you do have a time limit because you only have 400 rings you cannot earn any more throughout the entire time you're doing this whole boss rush and of course when you're transformed as supersonic you are losing a ring for every second to start bringing in my main issues I don't like that we have to go do these little runs to get to the top of the Titans to activate the boss fights again, this part feels useless and it feels a little uh, copy paste. It feels very uh, drag and drop, not like this was uh, really thought through all that well as a boss rush. I think it would have made more sense if there was like a cyberspace equivalent. Maybe you're inside cyberspace in a more like spacious environment, kind of akin to the other combat challenges and maybe just bring in the bosses and, uh, you know, tweak certain animations. I, I do understand the Wyvern and Knight would be a lot harder to do that for, but you could do like a simulated environment, just something to make it visually distinct from the first time that we did it. And then yeah, just running through these little obstacle courses at the beginning just feels like a waste of time. Like I've already done these. These are not difficult. They're not hard. It's just something that breaks the pacing between the fights. And especially if you are trying to perfect something in particular, when you are running through this entire boss run, from the beginning each time, it becomes more and more aggravating every time you have to do that Wyvern run because, man, it just feels like it takes longer than it needs to. And, you know, there's enough input here where you know you're not dead, but it's not really that hard and it's just tedious. And the reason you're going to be running through these several times is because of the perfect parry. Now, the perfect parry, once again, is something that I actually really wanted from this game. It's something that I thought would have made the combat a little bit more engaging and that's a shorter window for when you can actually parry attacks. Now you have to parry as that attack is about to connect with you. If you do it too early or you do it too late, you're going to get hit and that's going to cost you time, something you don't have a lot of when you're running from the same pool of 400 rings from the beginning of this boss rush all the way to the end. That is a cool concept. It also doesn't work. There's going to be plenty of the most uncreative response imaginable, which is skill issue, but I would like to point out that this has been such a huge talking point for a reason, and that's because of the sheer amount of people that have all had the same problem with being able to read this, and a lot of it is with that fight with the Wyvern, because his slashes 
something about it just doesn't feel right because I swear the timing is off. Just going off the numbers, just based off statistics, there's something wrong here. Something ain't clicking. I can do the other fights pretty well in terms of the parry mechanic. It took some time and, you know, I had to, to figure out where that actual window was, but I got it. And like even during the Wyvern fight, I can bounce missiles back just fine. But once I get up to him, it's like anywhere within that window of him like being just about to swipe during the swipe right at the end of the swipe somewhere in there is your window for doing the perfect parry and it's kind of hard to figure out so, man this really just does not work as well as it should and it's really telling because each of these bosses telegraphs their attacks in a variety of ways but the wyvern himself because he's so noodly and because his speed just shifts all the times between his movements he's hard to read and and the telegraphing is so different between all of them. They all have like a different visual language for uh, for their movements. And the sound cues and that little white waveform that shows up around Sonic are not helpful because both are drowned out visually and audibly from everything else going around in these fights uh, between the music, the sound effects, and then like the visual mess that is just happening on screen. The, uh, the minimalistic UI is not doing this mechanic any favors, and man, I'm no stranger to a good parry mechanic. One of my favorite games ever, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. It's a lot of fun, and getting the parry down in that is fun and satisfying. You know, you feel like you're clicking with it because you learn how to read the movements, you learn how to read the timing, and here, it just doesn't work like that, and when the cost of failing to get it a couple of times means that you're gonna have to start from the beginning beginning of the Giganto fight, then that becomes really aggravating. I completely understand why everybody has such an issue with this. And for me, it's like, man, I ran through everything else. I conquered everything else that this game had to offer on hard mode. So having to scale back to like easy for this mechanic to even feel like it works just doesn't feel right, man. Although I should try normal mode, uh, I guess uh, maybe work my way up, kind of go from there. But it's, I don't know, it's, it's aggravating when hard mode feels like it means something completely different from the main game or even the earlier portions of this DLC than it does when it comes to this one mechanic and making it feel like it even functions properly. And it's really funny that it has to be such a hassle during this one section because it is actually a lot easier to use on hard mode during the final fight, which takes place after this. I guess with that said, though, it is time to get into to spoiler territory. So if you want to go in blind and you don't want to know about the actual narrative context of this DLC, uh, I would just go ahead and recommend that you stop watching now or at least you skip past this part. All right, thank you. So I guess this whole DLC is all based off of a simulation that Sage ran that she thought was an impossibility, but she decides to share with Sonic and give a shot. Is this canon? Is the original ending canon? I guess if only one of them can be, this would be the less likely because you have to jump through a portal and the final islands to even reach this scenario. So it already feels like it has like a dimensional disconnect from the previous events. I don't know. It feels a little weird. I'm going to choose not to think about it too hard because I want to sleep tonight. But this comes down to Sonic needing to run around these towers and converse with the pilots of the Titans and with one of the Master Coco, who was this great warrior and leader from the Ancients to help obtain a new form of Super Sonic, to help gather up energy from cyberspace and from the Chaos Emeralds to be able to take on the threat that is coming, the end. And while he's doing all of that, Amy, Tails, and Knuckles are running around gathering the Chaos Emerald so that he can transform into Super Sonic, tank all the Supreme, and then use his newfound power to defeat the end. After you defeat that boss rush, the Master King, Coco, is able to give his power over to Sonic, and with this, he can avenge the Ancients and keep their memory alive. Things start off here with a fight with the Supreme, and it's just as mindless and piss easy as it was in the base game. There's not a whole lot going on here, but once he's defeated, that's when the end shows up and we just get this huge gigantic moon hovering in the sky above this landscape and I wasn't 
thrilled with the end and its depiction in the base game, but just giving it this sense of scale and presence does make me think a little more highly of it as an entity. I feel it more because I feel like I've actually seen it in a context with Sonic there and not in a uh, completely different genre of game where you don't even see Sonic present. This was cool and the way that it possesses the Supreme Titan and it just turns into this writhing creature. It's got all of these extra limbs and everything. This new fight that they put together for this already feels so much cooler. It does start off with you not even being able to do a whole lot to the Supreme, but after you get knocked around a little bit, Sonic goes into Super Sonic 2, or is it Cyber Sonic? I'm not entirely sure what the canon name is for this thing just yet. I'm sure we'll hear about it eventually. But this is essentially the form that we trained up using the Perfect Parry for, because when we attain this form of Super Sonic, the Perfect Parry can just deflect any attack that exists. That's the gimmick, and it makes this fight pretty dang cool. This fight does still have its own quirks, though. Uh, one of the major ones being the camera, and it just loves to duck behind the trees, and it's just impossible to see anything that's going on. Another one is that the main idea here is that you're supposed to attack the head and then switch your target over to this tether in the back of his neck. The end is used Using to possess this thing as an avatar and uh, the game is not good at explaining that you're supposed to attack the main target and then hit one of the shoulder buttons to do a sidestep or like a dodge and then that switches your target over to the tether so you can progress the fight otherwise you're just going in a cycle because it's constantly healing itself throughout the entire course of the fight unless you just know how this thing works that I'm pretty sure the game never actually teaches you you are just kind of stuck duck, which is ridiculous. Still though, man, this is so satisfying. There's a new updated version of I'm Here playing throughout this fight. It's so cool. You can use a side loop on him twice to just absolutely crush him, and it is surprisingly visceral and violent. Uh, he does this like little like scatter run on the ground towards you if he manages to hit you in a certain point. This is a really cool ending. This is a super cool final boss. It's not my favorite final boss in the franchise, not by a long shot. There's so many that left me with is such a deeper impression, but this means a lot more to me than the original ending for this game had, and I think it's wildly more satisfying. The music, the tone, everything is super, super cool here. This version of Super Sonic is just so sassy, and he's just like smacking back attacks left and right. This is cool. This is satisfying. And while I did have my first Frustrations, just kind of getting through the content of this DLC prior to this moment. This really did feel like the payoff. This made all of that feel like it was worth the work. And again, I do find it funny that even on hard mode, this is a lot easier than the Wyvern fight from the boss rush was, but I've probably bellyached about that enough already. I also like the way things just end off here, you know, hijacking the Supreme's rifle, just beating this thing into the moon, and then just rocketing yourself through the rifle and seeing like this really bizarre little form uh, for just a, a split second before rocketing upwards. Although I do want to say it feels a a little weird that this, whatever this was, was not this new form. I, I get that it's supposed to be he is, uh, he's a letting loose and he's losing control and this is why he loses his power and everything like that, but at least it's more visually distinct than, you know, the form that we have now, where it's like he's got a red border and there's a little bit more energy particles and he's got blue eyes now. Uh, cool, I guess. I, I don't care for this as a new form for Super Sonic. It doesn't even feel like a new form of supersonic it just feels like supersonic doing a new thing it doesn't uh, it doesn't really feel like uh, this is a step up from that as a state of being for Sonic. If you had done something like this, then that would have been something a little bit more to go off of. It feels like it fits tightly in with the context of the story, with, uh, you know, the culture that he got this power from, and I think it just visually would have been a lot more memorable, and uh, I don't know, it, it just a little potential there. It still doesn't take away from this cool moment as, you know, he's rocketing through the end, taking it out. The ending from here is pretty much the way it was in the original 
original, although we don't have this kind of like forced heroic sacrifice from Sage that already kind of felt like an eye roll moment in the main game, especially since the post credit scene just showed Eggman bringing her back to life anyway. That felt completely unnecessary, and I'm glad that's not repeated here. Eggman and Sage just agree to go home. It feels sweet, but also kind of ominous because we're seeing that even as she has evolved and she has grown throughout the course of the game, she is still like loyal to Eggman, like possibly to the death. And that's concerning because uh, I like Sage a lot and uh, I know that I'm going to have to fight her again at some point. A lot of this does leave me in a much happier state of mind than the original game did. And I was frustrated and I shared a lot of the upset feeling that a lot of other fans did when it came to, you know, the perfect parry mechanic to uh, that third time that I fell down this one tower and uh, had a harder time making my way back up than I did the first time because assets didn't load back in. Stuff like that. Uh, being disappointed with the new playable characters and everything like that. But at the same time, it's just like, I am really happy that we got this. I appreciate that it's free. I appreciate that, you know, there was so much poured into, especially this one last update. There's so much new music and a lot of it is really, really good. I like a lot of the overworld themes. I think the fact that we have instrumentals for the main boss themes is really great. Again, Kellen Quinn coming back in to do I'm Here and giving us a new version of that is fantastic. I really appreciate just how much was packed into this. And it did leave me in a more positive state of mind just in terms of the game's overall narrative, but it does really feel like the story beats and a lot of the more hands-off stuff was a lot more fulfilling than anything that I was actually playing. There were one of two elements that I thought were neat, but all of the stuff gameplay-wise in this final DLC that I was super excited about all felt kind of underwhelming, and it felt like it didn't really reach the potential that it could have, and maybe they'll tweak it with a patch. There's some things that you really can't just, like, smooth over in an update, anything like that. I don't know that I'm really going to continue to care after this. I don't know how long it's going to be before I sit down to play through this game again. I'm just glad we got this, and I really do commend just everyone on the team that put this together, that stayed dedicated to just wrapping things up and tying a little bow on all of this. If anything, I think the imperfection of this final update is just kind of emblematic of the mess that this game is kind of in. This is a much better, like, mainline Sonic game outside of, like, maybe Mania that we've gotten in a very long time. This is a level of quality that I think the Sonic series was needing to attain, and it's not everywhere that it could be just yet, but it does kind of give me a little bit of hope. I am a little frustrated that it feels like we are kind of filled with hope and then that's just not met the next time a Sonic game comes around. It's that classic Sonic cycle people like to meme about. But man, this really could have left off on a, on a lesser note. Any of my issues that I think I have with this update really speak more to the foundation it was all built on, not necessarily what was just put together post-release. I have a lot of respect for Sonic Frontiers, but it is a messy game and it's not great. I do think it's good. I do think it's a good game and I do think it's a lot of fun and I'm really glad that we got it and I'm really glad that we've played it, but it has not achieved greatness. I hope that one day we can see Sonic do that again and, you know, in a larger scale 3D game. Personally, I don't know if I'm convinced on this open zone formula anymore. I'm not sure if maybe trying to attain that might be a little bit of a fool's errand for Sonic. There's so much that you have to do to justify a world that large and it feels like a little bit of a stretch for this character and how his playstyle works. Maybe if you incorporate the other characters in more logical ways and actually formulate the environment to accommodate them instead of laying down a world and then just kind of like sprinkling obstacle courses on top of it, builds that into it. Have more like interior areas and stuff like that uh, that really bring out this feeling of adventure, I do think going back to SA 1 and 2, I'm not just trying to be nostalgic, I promise you, but I do think that there's a template there worth looking back into, and then take the good elements from this and build something really special for whatever the next game is. Personally, I'm looking forward to Sonic Superstars. I do want something a bit more toned back. I want something that isn't trying so hard to check off all the boxes for what the game industry demands these days for a AAA 
AAA release. I hope we get like just that ideal 3D big style Sonic game at some point down the road, but I did have fun with this and I'm grateful for the experience. Well, hey, thank you for letting me talk. This is a little beefier than my side quest videos normally get, but I did have a lot to say about this one. You know, with that said, I do want to just give a special thanks to all of the support, to my viewers, to my Patreon supporters, and I do want to give a very special shout out to my current top tier patrons. Brendan Hess, Earl Valco, Is Sonic Team Making You Blue, Dims Leaving You Dumped, Big Red Button Giving You a Big Red Headache, Try Sonic the Chronic, Jazzy Jefferson, Jeremiah Harrison, Lederick, McKenzel, Mitch Pym, Nickel Plated, Not Catchy, Patricia Marku, Seraph 13, Cinderin 7, Snapkick, and Cirrus the Skeptic. Thank you all so much. You make this possible and you make it worth it. With all of that said, it is Metroid Month and I've got a big video in the workings for you. Until then, see you next mission.